live. This is one for the record. I'll give you some breaking news. It was posted three hours ago off a of Dutch census channel. I'm just going to play it. Hopefully you can see it when I turn the camera around. Alrighty then. Here, I'm going to turn the camera around. There we go. There it is. Got the air conditioner going on in the background. I'm going to leave my air on. I'm just going to turn this up because Max doesn't like it with the air off. It's too hot in here. All right, here we go. Maybe I'll turn the air off. I'm going to have to. Max, i got to turn the air off. I'm sorry again. Uh, I think everybody needs to see this, the ones that don't go to his channel. Just a moment. Here we go. And I'm going to give you some prepper talk, basically. Central Time on Tuesday, July 3rd, 2012. Looking at Intellicast here, we have the Continental Radar View turned on. We'll also turn on the National Weather Service Alerts and Titan Storm Tracking. Now you can see all these blue boxes. That is computer detection of hail. So this means about three quarters of the United States is under some kind of severe weather. Let's just get right into it, start naming some towns and states to watch. First off the bat, up here in the north, Montana going north to Saskatoon, Canada, west into Alberta, south of Edmonton, northeast of Calgary. We have strong cell thunderstorm warnings and watches issued by the Canadian Service and one tornado warning southeast of Saskatoon heading east-northeast. The storm is counterclockwise rotating, so be aware if you live south of Saskatoon in between Saskatoon and Regina that this is very strong and going to carry on for the next several hours. Now there's a line of hail going south through Montana. Again, the National Weather Service has issued severe thunderstorm warnings and watches and that's all heading east-northeast. Now, as we go south from there, in Colorado, also going up into western Nebraska, extending south through the entire state of New Mexico, and even going west into Arizona, extending south of the border down here in Mexico, and then east into west Texas, hail detected strong cell thunderstorms. Those are heading west-northwest, east-northeast, and north. Now, across Texas and east Texas, we have strong cell thunderstorms, damaging winds, and hail detected. Also, Louisiana, Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, also South and North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia. It also looks like Baltimore, Maryland, New York, Pennsylvania, Michigan, and eventually the East Coast states as well. That would be New Hampshire, Vermont, also Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and even down here to Delaware. So be aware that's all going on right now and will carry on for the next few hours. It's 5.50 right now, which means we still have a few more hours of sunlight to carry on with. National Weather Service does have a severe thunderstorm warning issued right here east of Detroit, and that's going southeast across the lake. Now, due north from there, we have tornado warnings and watches issued by the Canadian Service south of Hudson Bay, and those are heading east-southeast, may eventually get towards Montreal directly, We'll have to watch that, okay? So have a plan and be prepared, folks. That's three quarters of the country. I'm going to go ahead and name all those states down below in the description box. And if you get any confirmation stories on this hail or any possible tornadoes damaging winds damage, go ahead and put it down below this video. Have a plan and be prepared. All right. Okay, I just wanted you to see that. Now I'm going to give you some, uh, those who have their power out, I'm just going to give you some suggestions that you might not have thought of since all the power, uh, the power outages, whatever is going on. Uh, let's first deal with the power outages. 
Let me give you some helpful uh, tips right now. If you have your power out, other than it's best if it's nighttime, just go to sleep and then wake up in the morning. You know, if it's nighttime, then just go to sleep early to bed, early to rise. So that's what they used to do in the old days. Now, if you have any of those little, uh, you know, lights out on your lawn, the little uh, solar lights, they're about this big, little solar lights. If you don't have them, if you're able to buy any, go ahead, buy some. And it's best to charge them up in your window. Don't put them in the dirt outside. Keep them in your house. Char put them in like a little jar. That's what I do. Put them in the window. And that way you'll have some kind of lighting. You don't even have to worry about batteries and flashlights and all that. Get like, you know... A bunch of them, three or four, six, twelve, however many you think you might need. They're very inexpensive. Get the ones that are for the Fourth of July that Walmart has for like a buck, a buck fifty or something, and just start charging them up. Alrighty, for tomorrow, if it's too late today, if you have some out on your lawns and they're pretty clean, no bugs in them or anything like that, you can use them in the house. Just don't lean them up against anything. Put them like in a vase, a vase, a sturdy uh, jar, something that they'll fit in. And if, if you need to take the bottom off, fine. But what I'm just saying, you fit them in. Stick them in a plant in the house if you have to. If they're the kind of, that spike into the ground, you could do that. You know, put them in your potted plant. Just like if it was outside in your lawn. Charge them up in the window. That way you have lights going. Every time nighttime comes, they'll they'll light up everywhere. The next thing is everybody be nice to everybody else. There's power in, in niceness. You're going to have to start bartering. If you have to barter, then barter. You know, hang with your neighbors. If you're worried, you know, the more people in one house, the better off you probably are. If you're alone, go somewhere where there's, you know, other people around that you know. Because that way, you know, you can help each other. You can help each other out. That might be a better thing to do is to help each other out. And if there's a lot, you know, the more people, the less likely uh, someone's going to mess with you. Alrighty. If you're a refrigerator, if, if there's any way of getting any ice at all anywhere, just stick it in the top of your refrigerator. If your power's still on and you're worried about the power going off, make sure you fill up empty soda bottles. You know, like if you have, let me see if I got one here. If, you know, the two liter. I did that myself. I'll hide the brand name. There you go. Two liter bottle like this. Two liter bottle. Fill it with water. Put it on the on the bottom shelves. If you have a top freezer, hopefully you do. Put it, line them up on the bottom shelves of your refrigerator, and let them freeze if the power is on. They'll buy you a few days. You know, I'll buy you a few days. Go to a neighbor's house, share your food. If you you know, everybody share everything. Share your food and go have cookouts, just like they do in the hurricanes here. You know, everybody start bartering back and forth. You might have sugar, and they might have some soda. They might have, you know, one thing. They have a, you don't have, which you should have, is leach a little hibachi or a little grill. And you never do it inside, you do it outside. And grill your food on the on the grill outside. If you're in a flash flood area, always have with you somewhere right by you. You leave, you go in your car, put it in the back seat. Have yourself, however many people there are, or if it's you and you usually might you might have a friend with you, life jackets. In case there's flash flooding, always have a life jacket in the back seat on the floor in your car. Alrighty then, pets. <coughs> if you have to, if you have enough pet food, let me tell you this. Or let's say you don't have enough pet food. 
And if you have to cook up, you know, when you cook yourself a steak or whatever you need to cook up, mix some of it with the, you know, if it's like just meat, mix it up with the uh, dog food. Try to stretch out that dog food, you know. Try to try to stretch it out in an emergency for your pets. You can always, they'll always eat, you know, the ones that are especially picky, they'll eat their dog food if you mix a little can of tuna that's older. Hopefully you don't have the kind that's uh, tainted from Fukushima. Or, a, you know, or uh, uh, you have, you know, some of your supplies that's just meat and you want to add it to the little bit of food they have and you want to stretch it out, mix it up. Mix it up, they'll eat it. Cats too. I did that with my liver the other day. I broke out the liver, cooked it up, and I kind of like poured a little bit of cat food, mixed it up with some liver, mixed it up real well. They had a special, they think they're having a special treat there, you know, but it'll stretch the food out. Some people say, oh, I don't give my pets human food. You better, you know, what's better for the byproducts or human grade? Think about it. As long as it's not a bunch of other stuff in there, it's just meat, plain meat, not salted, not 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 seasoned, just regular. Cook your meat plain. Probably better for you anyway. And that way you can break off pieces and mix it in with the pet food if you have to. I'm going to show you what lights I'm talking about. I'll be right back. Because I keep telling people this, and I don't think they know what I'm talking about. I'll be right back. These cheapo lights. These make good flashlights. Look at this. It's already lit up. Look at that. You can see it's lit up in here. I keep that in my bathroom window. I just stick it in a vase and put it in the window and try to make sure you, you get this, the, the, you know, the solar little panel on top here. See the little solar panel? Make sure that's facing outward towards the sun so that the sun just beads in the window and charges it up, you know, it's hard to show you, but it's on. See it? If I turned off all the lights, it would be on. I don't know if I should turn the lights off right now, that way you can tell. But, you got, I, I might not have charged that up enough. Let me see. Yeah, it's going. Not real well. It wasn't really facing outward, but it's a, enough. It'll be enough, and then you can walk around with it. You walk around with your light. You don't have to play with the batteries. And usually these things last for hours. You know, they're supposed to, they last mainly all night long. Why put them on your sidewalk out there? Keep them in the house for an emergency. You know what I'm saying? Those are very important. Those are even good if you say your dome lights out in your car. <laughs> I, was, I, use, I was using one in my car. But you got to cover it out of the way so that it's not going while you're driving, you know. You got you to gotta flip it up and put it into something so that uh, it's not really lighting up in your car unless you need to pull it out and use it in the dark because your dome light's not working. But I'm telling you, that would save you a big hassle and you don't have to worry about the batteries. You get what I'm saying? And... Uh, so the best thing I can suggest for you right now is to be friendly to one another and to start bartering and sharing. If you're out of something, you know, some neighbors won't share it, but some probably will. You know, you contact your friends first, your very, you know, limited next door neighbors. That's what you need to do and help each other out. You see what I'm saying? And next time around, make sure you have plenty of medicine. Because if you don't have, you should get three months supplied, the 90 day. Tell them you're going on a trip. And have medicine on hand. Especially if you, like, have your thyroid out. What do you think happened to those people with diabetes, 
or they had their thyroids out, and they uh, life-sustaining medication. What do you think happened in Louisiana? What do you think happened? Well, whatever's going on right now, you're better off with little solar lights, especially if there's like some kind of a horrible storm or, you know, earthquake, whatever. In case, you know, you don't want to light any candles if there's gas, pets, anything like that around that could cause a fire, little kids. You're better off with just the little solar lights, you know. And then keep them in like a, I told you, little vases or stick them right into a plant that you have in the house. Alrighty then, just make sure they're not leaning against, who knows, don't lean them against the curtains or anything. I, I don't think they get hot, but don't trust them. Never trust them. Don't lean them up against anything. Alright. And if you don't have water, put some away now. If you have empty beer bottles or some beer drinkers out there, fill up your empty beer bottles. Rinse them out and fill them up. And then if you have to stick something in there, like a, anything to cap it for right now, you better have some water on hand. Or at least your empty soda bottles. Fill that up. And, uh, ask the, and you know, pray. Just pray and sing songs and you'll get through it. Alrighty? And be nice to one another. That's the one thing you want to do. No chaos. Alrighty? And then if they were smart... The stores, if they were smart, or if you have, this is why you need older people also to hire people that are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, like that. You know, it's always good to have older people on hand when they lived when there was pow no power, and or they lived when you, everything was done by hand. So you break out the cash drawers and you keep the store open and you actually have the older employees who can actually count and know how to give out change. Alrighty then, you use a cash drawer. If they have an opening bank, you sit there. Forget about the, the inventory stuff. You can do a massive inventory later. And what you do is they come up and you actually do it by math. Or buy, a, you know, a 10 key if you have to. And you just go ahead and tell them there is no refunds. There are no exchanges. What you buy is final. And that's it. And you sit there and you calculate it out on paper. Or or if you have to do it on a solar calculator. If you got to do it by hand, you do it. And then you just give them, you know, you count back their change. And you still sell everything in the stores. You don't just leave the stores closed because that's how you do have problems and riots and weird stuff. You see what I'm saying? Best just is go ahead and sell out and if you can stay open during the day. Shouldn't be a problem. And if you had enough of those lights like what I have, you'd be open at night too and not depend on the grid. Alrighty then. Those are just some heads up suggestions if if it hasn't hit you yet be prepared and this heat and the record heat waves i'm not sure where it's coming from okay we've had a bunch of solar flares but coincidentally uh we were all worried about spent fuel pool number four right i'm not i'm not letting japan off the hook yet i'm not letting fukushima off the hook yet with this strange kind of weather and heat Alrighty then, you might want to take your Geiger counters out there if they're so functioning. Take them out there and start testing everything. Because uh, I have a slight bit of a bad feeling. It's just a gut feeling that some of this heat might not be natural heat. Alright? So. Or, Russia has harp also. You know that, right? I think Russia has one. So whatever's going on, there's something unnatural, be it Japan, be it that the current's down over there uh, off the Gulf Coast, you know, the loop current's gone. 
I did a BP spill. You got like 10 different factors on why. It could be magnet coming up for all we know. It could be in the, the core of the magnet starting to come closer and closer and the heat starting to rise out of the ground. I have no idea. This might not be natural heat. Take your radiation detectors out there and check everything also and let everyone else know. The sun, you know, I don't think this is, this is not, this might not be a natural occurrence. Most likely not. So, just heads up, be nice, be friendly, and go to the barter system and trade. Trade with your neighbors, help your neighbors. If they have nothing to trade and they really need something, and you got enough of it, help your neighbor out. And remember, if you're sewing by themselves or something, you might want to invite them in. Especially if they have something that you don't have, maybe. Everybody put their resources together. Alright? Do it in an orderly fashion. I want you to take care. I'm keeping my eyes open. If I hear of anything, I'll let you know. And uh, talk to you again tomorrow. This is just a uh, breaking news update. Because I can't just not say, you know, in my heart, i got to tell you and warn you the best I can. The best I know. Alrighty. And if for those who do have, there's other ways of making power too. You might want to check those out on uh, YouTube. There's other ways of getting power. I think from you can make batteries out of orange juice and and panties. That's right. And a couple copper little things you could put in there and some wire. If you got yourself some electricity, it might be enough to even you know, charge up something. So, heads up. Heads up. Everybody be, be on their best and help each other out during this uh, catastrophic crisis of whatever's going on. Alrighty then. And try to head for the shade. Head for a shady spot. Another thing that I thought of a long time ago, it's just a thought. If you can tarp, somehow put four poles, say you have a little house. You can put one, two, three, four poles, this is for the heat, and then put a tarp, <coughs> do like a makeshift tarp. I know when I lived on my boat, you, you, it went 10, 20 degrees cooler. If you uh, ha some tarped your boat from the boon, if you can make some kind of teepee over your house and the weather's not real bad, it's just real hot, not windy and it's going to blow away or blow all over the place, see if you can put like a little, little teepee, like a little tent, even if it's part of the roof. And your roof should be white in this kind of heat. It'll drop your temperature by by tens of degrees if you if you have a white roof just so you know that if your roof is white if you got black trim somewhere if that was white I'm just giving you a heads up your house will be cooler just so you know all right or your boat if you're on a boat and you're stuck on a boat you put the tarp across the boom like this and double tip it tie tie it run it across it'll be so much cooler and if you have a stripe on your boat like a nice pretty blue stripe get rid of that paint it white if you're living in this extreme heat even though you're on the water alrighty then try to make yourself some uh, you know like tarps get under them alright you have a wonderful, wonderful evening, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow. These are just suggestions off the top of my head. Just just so I know, I told you something that might help you that you did not think of. All right? Oh, one other thing. If you're on your boat, there's no refrigeration. Sometimes people would put stuff in a net, bag it up, and they throw it overboard into the water. If the water's cool enough you can do that in certain spots if it's cool enough that will refrigerate your your food and your drinks and whatever that's another way of doing it all right 
Also, there's other ways of refrigeration. You can look it up on YouTube that they make containers and then they put sand in it. They put water in it. It's like a water evaporation system. And then they cover it. They, they put it kind of like into the ground and you cover it. And that also works as a refrigeration unit too. Look that up on YouTube if you need to. But that's what they do in the African deserts. There's a lot of things they used to do back in the old days when they didn't have electricity. Alrighty? So, usually, way, you know, you go deep enough down, it's like a constant 72. You know, not too far down in, it's sealed really well, so no bugs, bugaboos get in there. It's, uh, there's other ways of keeping things cool. So, alright, you take care. Hopefully some of that helped you out. I know most of you say, oh, I knew that, or she's crazy. No, I'm just trying to give you some friendly advice, just in case some people, not everyone knows everything. All right? Take care. See you uh, tomorrow.